who are eligible to go into a nursing home clinically but would rather stay at home. So, for instance, you're getting all the health care and support services at home as opposed to a nursing home because the costs of nursing homes are very high, so it's a lot more affordable for MassHealth to provide the services for you at home. And the, the Community Choices Program that is a program for frail elder waiver members to, who are at imminent risk of going into a nursing home to receive more care at home. So just, I keep on saying more care just to give you an idea of what that means. If you're a, a basic BayPath client, you're getting three hours a week. And that three hours goes by very fast. Um, either Meals on Wheels or home care, shopping, it's, it doesn't last that long. With the Frail Elder Waiver, that goes up to six hours. With the Community Choices, it's unlimited. You, it's unlimited, really. And that's based upon what the nurses at Bay Path um, feel that the needs are. But to qualify for that program, ro roll back one more, roll back one, please. You, but, but to qualify that program, you need to show that you're otherwise eligible for nursing home care. Right. Right? There. Yep. Which means you need to show that you meet these. Can we just talk about the activities of daily living for a second? Yep, Once definitely. again, I, some of you folks have seen this, but it's just important to see this in, the con in this context. Okay? Right. So you, to qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver, you need assistance with at least two activities of daily living, and that's bathing, dressing, transferring, things like that. Um, and the skilled nursing need is that can be if you're, for example, if you're oxygen dependent or insulin dependent, with those you'd have to be 24 hours a day, not just, oh, I need a little help once a day or once every other day, but this means 24-7. You're needing assistance. You're not able to do it yourself. So that's kind of, and also with the skilled nursing, that also includes medication management. If it's just the medication management, you really need those other two activities of daily living. And can we talk about queuing and supervision? Sure. And there's a difference between um, when you're assisting with all the skills I just talked about, with hands-on assistance, um, if you're needing help getting in and out of the bathtub or dressing or bathing, as opposed to queuing and supervision, which could be reminders um, and saying at certain times of the day, okay, it's time to do this skill. So that's the difference between hands-on and queuing and supervision. So, so remember, when you're thinking about this, to qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver, because everybody's goal is to stay at home. Everybody's goal is always to stay at home. Everybody's worst dream is to have to spend prolonged periods in a nursing home. God forbid to have to die in a nursing home, right? So when you're thinking about <coughs> qualifying for the Frail Elder Waiver, you're, you, by, by showing that you're in need of these services, you're showing that you would otherwise be eligible for nursing home care. But the reason why I emphasize that is, once again, as we've talked about before, there's a big difference between how bad you'd have to be before you'd be willing to go to a nursing home and how bad you have to be before MassHealth says that it'd be okay to go to a nursing home, right? You only need to show that you can't do two of the activities of daily living, the bathing, dressing, eating, toileting, and there are actually two transferring. There's, there's like a getting up, mm -hmm and then there's kind of getting across the room. If you can't do two of those, or if you're in need of constant supervision, you can do them all, but the danger is you're going to walk out the door and never come back. In those cases, you're eligible for nursing home care, even though you wouldn't, or your spouse wouldn't want you to go there at that point. But what that means is you're also eligible for the Frail Elder Waiver. That's the important distinction. Now, if you're in that kind of situation, then, once again, you're, you're entitled to 
and is there is there a limit to the amount of hours and things that that Bay Path will allow you to have at home in order to keep you at home? Well, that's all determined by the nurse. It's all determined by the nurse. And so, and literally, the regulations do not have a cap on that. No, they don't. Right? There is no cap on that. Next slide. So now we're just going to talk a little bit about the money. So in order to qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver, you need to, be, once again, we're just talking about Frank and Mary here. They're the same situation. To qualify, next slide. You need to meet two standards. One, you have to have assets of less than $2,000, same as the nursing home standard. Then there is also, in this case, an income standard. There's never, not an income standard if you're going to the nursing home because you would have to be making a lot of money to be <laughs> making more than what it costs to go to the nursing home. But to stay home, you have to show that you have, you're earning less than $2,094 per, per month. And that's increased to 2130 It just, just went up. Recently. Oh, it just went up. <laughs> Congratulations. We're up to 2130 right? Yeah. Um, but there are a couple of things to remember about that. First of all, it's only the spouse that's at applying for the Sprail Elder Waiver whose income is counted. For this program, the other spouse's income isn't counted. Second, the home is not counted. Third, the assets of the other spouse are not counted. And you can transfer the assets to the other spouse any time. There's no look back period. So in this situation with Frank and Mary, at any time, if one of them wants to be staying home, they, would b they both meet these income criteria, right? One of them could simply shift all of their assets to the other one. Remember now, they're both still at home, right? And they could qualify for whatever Bay Path says they need. And this could not, doesn't have to be just nursing home care. This can just be home care, just home care, in order to keep them at home, as well as qualifying for, paying for, um, uh, adult day programs that are so-called medical model adult day programs that actually have the nursing component and all of that jazz included. Can you, can I you just, yeah, talk I just about that distinction? I just wanted to clarify yeah. that a medical model adult day health is paid for by Medicaid, meeting all of these things we've talked about, meeting the needs of that individual, qualifying under the income. The social model, as in pleasantries, is not funded by Medicaid. So that is a private pay entity. And can you talk about, there is, there is a medical model program here in Marlboro, Aging right? Aging Well Adult Aging Day well. Health is on located Maple on Maple Street right. in Marlboro, so you, you would want to check that out. And, and by the way, if you've got, you know, for yourself, or if you've got friends or loved ones or whatever that may, you think may want to partic participate in such a program, what you ought to do, this is really part of the planning, just go walk in. Just go walk into these places. Walk into her place. Walk, in, walk into <laughs> Aging Well down the street on Maple Street, just to get a sense of it just to get a sense of what these places are. So, um, in this case, either spouse could qualify any time. Next slide. If Frank were dead and it were only Mary, they would be more of an issue because, now Mar because Mary has substantial assets, right? However, Mary could take those assets. Um, next slide. And, and do a two or three different things with them, right? She could qualify for mass health by having those, putting those funds into a so-called D4C pooled trust. We've talked about these before. They're third-party trusts that you transfer the money to. They're run by nonprofits. You can, and, the, and those nonprofits will invest and reinvest that money and then can use it for Mary or use it on her behalf. So they could use it to provide for any of the supplementary care that MassHealth is not providing. There, if you want to learn about pooled trusts, just Google them. Just Google pooled trusts. Um, or Google something called Plan of Massachusetts. Plan of Massachusetts, it, just to get a sense of how, the, of how, those, things, of how those programs work. Um, she could also, into, also enter into a care agreement with her, with her daughter to have her daughter providing some care for her. But most importantly, in this situation, once she is qualified for the Frail Elder Waiver, she can also qualify to have her daughter be paid if her daughter is providing a lot of care for her at home, to take care of mom at home. Now, she can't be paid a huge amount, but the amount that she is paid is, not, is all, is non, is all non-taxable because she's considered to be like a foster, a, a, a foster it's, it's like the foster, day, the foster care program, but for adults, older adults instead of for children. So there are a lo there's a lot of services that can be provided to people who've got late stage Alzheimer's who are at home. But it, once again, the most important thing to know is if you're Frank and Mary, and so 
you, you know, you really, really want to keep your spouse at home, but it's just too much for you. Chances are, chances are, you'll qualify for the frail elder waiver and you can all stay at home. Next slide. Finally, as I had mentioned at the beginning, that's the information, and we're going to leave this slide up. That's the information on the Alzheimer's Association. You should have their hotline, you should have their email address, you should have their phone number. If you've got an emergency, or if you're, once again, because these are on TV, if you've got somebody, a loved one, a friend that you're concerned about, and you just want to get a sense of what to do, call these folks. Once again, this is all free. This is all paid for through donations and stuff. Or if you want to donate, you can do that too. Thank you very much. Any questions for any of us regarding any of these things? I know we covered a lot of material. I'm sorry that we all talk fast. Any questions from anybody? No. If not, thank you very, very much all for coming. In the next presentation, we're going to be talking about, kind of backed by popular demand, some basic documents. Basic documents. Healthcare proxies, powers of attorney, wills, trusts. Thank you very much. We'll see you in a little while. Bye-bye.